Hi, I'm Rick Johnson, and with me today is organ builder Martin Ott. Martin, thank you for being here today. Well, I appreciate the invitation. I'm we're in the Fourth Floor Chapel, Memorial Chapel of Third Baptist Church, and we're here today to talk about this instrument, which is on loan from Martin. Um, tell us what we're looking at here. Yeah, well, this is an instrument. In 1964, I built a little organ, which was based on an instrument which Wilhelm Ehmann from the North German Academy of Music brought to St. Louis with his choir to Concordia Seminary. And uh, there was a gentleman, he liked the instrument so much he ordered it. And this is the one he ordered, which lived most of the time in the Chicago area. When he retired, he asked me if I familiar and know this instrument. And I realized from the picture he said that I built this instrument according to the wood. So he just copied it from a picture right, of the right. instrument. And you know, in the meantime, we have built probably 10 of these instruments. This is one of the larger ones in scale. It has three stops. It has a holster deck eight, a four foot row foot, and a two foot principal. So three ranks all just in this little uh, area. And then some of the eight foot is actually, some of the eight foot is down here at the other Yeah, it is right? down there, the larger pipes, they are mitered. And then you can play it at 415 by moving the keyboard. Oh, so the whole keyboard shifts down in order to be able to. That's really neat. Well, let's listen to some of the stops first. Yeah. So uh, just the three stops, we have an eight foot gedeck. This is a wooden gedeck, it's a stopped flute. Very gentle sound in there. But a big scale. Yeah. It does carry. It goes all the way up. So the scale of this is, is 50 notes. You've actually got 51 pipes, so you can do that transposition down. So you've got one extra pipe on the bottom, one extra B. Right. So, uh, so all the ranks go all the way up. So after the eight foot gedeck, we have a four foot roar flute. Let's just do that by itself. Yeah. This is a metal roar flute. And it's a little, little louder than the eight foot. Right. Yeah. It's a big scale. Yeah. It's a big scale, so it's got it's nice and clear. I really like it. It's my, one of my favorite sounds on this little instrument. Very nice. I would like to say that the action is really sharp and, and very light, so you have to. It's very responsive, right. you have to be careful. It's a sticker <laughs> action. Okay, so you just push the sticker, it down. you push down and open the valve underneath. Okay. principle, which is it's very bright, very shimmery principle up there on top. So uh, here's the eight and four together. And then again, it's very clear. So you use that for a complemental um, sort of playing. This isn't really a solo instrument as much as for accompanying right, singers a or yeah. yeah, so continuo yeah. or having, having a small orchestra, Baroque music sort of thing. Perfect for that. Yeah. So, but if you want it to be nice and bright, you can turn on all three. It gives you a, a pretty full sound. So this is all made out of quarter sawn walnut, correct? Right. Um, that's fantastic. It's a beautiful case all the way around. Uh, but you, now this is meant to actually be transported, so it's designed to fit inside a band. Right? Yeah, uh, the, the upper portion, which separates from the base, 
is four feet tall. Okay, so four feet so tall here. So most of I mean, all the van doors are four feet. And the German records of VW bus was the standard for everything. This would fit in the old, old bus. In the VW bus. VW bus. <laughs> well, that's, uh, I delivered some of these instruments. Yeah. So you have to take them to the Belgian border. I remember one trip. <laughs> so uh, other similar instruments I've seen are they're all completely encased in a box. They don't have the pipes that are open. Uh, why do you have all of the pipes out instead of enclosed in a box where they can be more protected? Well, it is nice for the public to see the pipes. Oh. They know it is a pipe organ. But this organ is, has been at the symphony many times in this mm -hmm. style. And people always tell me, well, we like to look at your little instrument because we see the pipes. It's not, it's a pipe organ, not an electronic instrument. Also, the, the, conduct, the conductor standing up can accompany himself with the other musicians. So I remember a concert at the cathedral in San Francisco. Uh, it was a Hendel Concerto, an organ concerto, one of the favorite concerts. And you know, the conductor played the organ part. Very intimate and original. And there's some function to the design too. This panel over here is not just to protect the pipes and look pretty, but it actually helps. It protects the sound, yes. The sound. Yeah. I always suggest to turn you into a little bit angle to the audience or to the other position, whoever needs more of the sound. Makes sense. Um, now, this instrument is, uh, again, it's on loan to us. We're using it to make some music. Um, but it is for sale, isn't it? You're, yeah, if, uh, for the right. So if your first. buyers are interested, they can contact you on your website. We'll put information down in the description for how people can get in touch. Um, when it goes to its permanent home, um, you'll, you'll actually finish it. There's one little step left. Here. Right. Tell us about these little hooks on the pipes. Yes, yeah, this we go to the final location. It has accumulated a little bit of dust over some time. All the pipes will come out, and then I will they have a hook. They all can be screwed down in their own turn. They cannot be taken as a souvenir. And uh, of the ten instruments we have built, not a single instrument has been damaged. Or the pipe was missing. So that just so, it, because I should add, this is actually very easy to move. It just it has wheels, carpet here. But yeah. yeah, it's very easy to just slide it around. So if somebody has it and they don't, they're not using it all the time. They can put it away in the side and then bring right. it back out. And that moving around, the pipes won't get jostled or shaken yeah. in that too. So uh, that's a nice little addition. So. And also to help keep the thing in tune, we do have a wooden stop flute. But all of the metal pipes are. How are we keeping them in tune? Well, the the two foot is scrolled or is coned. We call it cone tuning. Okay. Instead of the tuning and slide. The flute. We pull the pipe out. We tune on the beard. The okay. beard is soft lead and it can be bent easily. Just bent into but one frankly, once the organ is in a stable environment, it will stay in tune. Um, the temperature is very influential to the pitch of a pipe organ. You know, two degrees Fahrenheit is one verse. So when the symphony rehearse in St. Louis, they don't have the hall that warm. So I have to explain to them they have to turn the stage lights on two hours before the rehearsal, then it warms up. Otherwise, it would be not 441, it would be 439. Well, I can add in the time it's been in this room, and today's a really cold day, we've got the heat on, but the metal pipes, I, I haven't touched them at all. Right. The wood pipes have used a little bit of adjustment at the top, but the, the scrolling, the, the scroll tuning and the comb tuning helps keep it really stable and I, nothing has had to be tuned. It also helps that it's all in one place, unlike a big church right. organ that might right. be spread out in different temperatures. Very good ventilation around the instrument. I think once all these pipes have been really fixed, that they cannot move, it will be very stable. The metal pipes are made from 75% tin, 25% lead, or four to two of principle. And Gedeck 8 is for us on walnut. So the Gedeck pipes are just as beautiful as the rest of the case of this uh, wonderful walnut instrument. The arrangement of the Gedeck is a little 
unique to be able to fit it all in there. It's not just straight like the, the right. Is. How is that accomplished? Or do we have tubes or what's happening? Well, the there are the holes in the deck, the larger six pipes are located in the lower case, and there are tubes off. There's a junction. When you set it down, it seals, and then there is that these pipes can play. In the upper pipes, there's a lot of groove in the toe board. Oh. So like the raw fluid. That pipe is over here, but the valve comes here, so it is groove in the toe board. The toe board is a board on which the pipe sits. So the toe board has several layers, and in one of the layers is a groove into the deep from the valve location to so the pipe out here inside the bed there. And this one even the, oh, extends over the chest a little bit, has a tube underneath, so it's coming off the yeah, roof. Yeah, next right. Time to right. Time. I see, okay. So that way you're able to arrange the pipes in the best way yeah, they do, that you still have mechanical action directly underneath the right. wheel. This is very compact. Okay. Has the stuff action to the right. Mm -hmm. My very early instruments, there was a lever on the side. And this instrument has a slider put out to the case. So you had to reach the wide <laughs> you had to if you wanted to have the whole stuff on it. You had to pull here and then to pull on this side. So oh, I see. There was, I mean, you had to be fast, so I had to have assistance. But it had to divide the key one. This one is not divided. It's, it is a, and uh, this, this is a convenient and then necessary. To access to the action is through the front, where you take this panel out. And uh, here we have the wind chest and when you press down the key by a wooden dowel you press down and open the valve. All the, this is the bung, in German we call it the Schwind. And I open you don't need to just Yeah, you can slide them up. This valve opens. This is also a keyboard scale for the same distance from note to note as we have up here. And the, the first couple of valves are a little bit wider because here this is where we have the big notes, but then they all come. And here it is. The gasket is felt with sheep leather, very traditional. And then there's a spring here, guided by this guard, which pushes the action back. If the keyboard is shifted to the right, the C plays at 440. If I shift it to the left, it shifts one note down, and it's at 415. We call that transposing keyboard. Now for early music this is desirable.
much for showing us this wonderful little instrument. Uh, it's been a joy to have here, and I hope it's, it's going to go to a, a good home someday. If you want to know more about Martin Ott and his company, you can visit his website. It's martinottpipeorgan.com. We'll put a link down in the description. If you want to know more about Margaret Beckman, who is singing for us, you can go visit her website. Uh, the link is down in the description as well. For streaming classical organ music 24 hours a day, remember you can find our three stations, OrgonLive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. Thank you for watching. I'm Brooke Johnson. We'll talk to you next time.